Like is your parents, wasn't it? Yeah, but I remember I came to country when I was, I was around 16, by myself. So I lived here by myself for a long time. Okay. okay. You know, so, uh, like, uh, uh, why, why, so, sorry to cut you, what was going to say anyway? What was, I was your... going to say, the, like, the way people have been brought up, like, I was brought up a Christian, but I think that it's kind of hard to blame somebody for who they, what religion they've become, or if they're atheist or not, because, like, even my parents, they, 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 I don't think they've even met someone who's Muslim, because they're living in a place where there's no Muslims, like, and they are never really exposed to it at all. Mm. And then, that's the, for the majority of people in my town, like, nobody... Where you from, you don't mind? Uh, if you don't... Cumbria. Huh? Cumbria? What is that? Near Scotland. Like, uh, okay, uh, I've been in Scotland, uh, well, you were to Edinburgh and uh, Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, my town's like very small, majority Christian, but like, with those people, of, a lot of them as well are atheists. Like, how are they ever going to be exposed to. Alhamdulillah, there's, there's, there's answer in the Quran for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Allah will never punish anyone until the proof becomes clear to them. So, if someone lives like in your town and she dies or he dies as a Christian, then Allah, and, and Islam, they will never expose Islam on the day of resurrection. Allah will never punish them straight away. Allah will test them because Allah is just. Because, like, my wife she's a revert. My wife she came from a Christian background, likewise. Uh, and I mentioned that story many times. She became Muslim when she was 14. Okay. And uh, uh, same thing. She was uh, majority of her, not majority of her life, but she came to this country when she was 12 or something. You know, she was in Seleucia. And she didn't know about Islam, and she thought Islam is like. You know, because she, 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 that time she was not exposed to Islam. But alhamdulillah, when Islam, when she was exposed to Islam, she, 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 said, she said, made sense to me, and she accepted Islam when she was 14. So alhamdulillah, Islam teach us, Islam is just Islam. Even if someone heard about Islam, but it's insane, Allah will not judge him. Because one of the conditions for Allah to judge people, and Allah just said for himself, not we impose on Allah, Allah put it for himself, sanity. Because sanity, gives you the ability to differentiate between right and wrong. If you don't have the sanity, if you are insane, you cannot do that. So that's why Prophet Muhammad mentioned there's three types of people. The pen is being lifted up from them, meaning they will not be held accountable. One of them is an insane person. One of them is a young boy who has not reached the age of puberty. The other person who is sleeping. Imagine I'm sleeping and I insult Islam. Allah will not hold me accountable because I was not in my consciousness. You understand? So Alhamdulillah, Allah is the most just. Like even my wife, she asked me about her father. Her father died, but no one explained Islam to him. I mean, what, before he died, I speak to him, but he, he went majnoon, he went crazy. You know? And I said, Alhamdulillah, make dua, pray to Allah to he pass the test on the day of resurrection and you go to Jannah. Allah is the most just, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you think you know? the prayers that you make now, for like, for like, say example, you want to make a prayer for your wife's father, your prayers now in, in like in this day and age will affect his his like uh, judgment on judgment day. Like your opinion of him, like your prayers to Allah. Will it depends change. if you're sincere, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer supplications. But remember Allah is there also. Allah knows about the person which you do not know. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like for example, I mentioned this thing here, yeah? I always pray to Allah. He gives me. Wallahi alhamdulillah. But there's one thing I've been asking for the last maybe fifteen years. I don't have it. This thing is really affecting my life, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy, alhamdulillah, you know. If, if, if one says, Shamsi, you know, I have no, one guy said, Shamsi, you have no problem in your life. But I know, I'm looking at, Allah gave me many things. If Allah is not giving me that thing, therefore it's not good for me. Even I'm thinking it's affecting my life, but Allah is the all wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you know, as a human being, we judge actions or things based upon the appearance. You with me? You know, that's why in the Quran, there's a story of the young boy, of the uh, Khadr and Musa. When Khadr, he was a prophet of Allah, who Allah gave him the knowledge of the inward things. And when you do an action, what it leads to. So he killed a young boy. Moses said to him, why are you killing a young boy who is an innocent person? I mean, all of us, if we see this man killing a young boy, you think, what is he doing? But he said to him, the reason I killed him, he was gonna grow up as an evil person and make his family suffer and make them disbelievers to go to hellfire. So I saved him from his own evil and I saved his family too. You see? So look, subhanAllah, us judging actions like what happened earthquake and everything, there's no doubt there's a wisdom behind it. Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't know. And the example I give always, imagine all of us here, we are standing and we see someone holding a saw and cutting someone's forearm. 
Yeah, you with me? Cutting someone's forearm. All of us, we're going to think what? He's a crazy man. He's mentally disturbed. Then you go to him and say, oh, crazy person, stop what you're doing. You say, no, I'm not crazy. This person has a deadly disease in his forearm. And if I let it grow, spread, you will kill him. So I'm cutting it off to save his life. What is he now? Evil or good? He's a good person. So what I mentioned example, sometimes maybe you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about something, but Allah knows he will not give it to you because Allah knows what is good for you, what is bad, what he knows about the person. You understand? Do you, do you think that Allah can enter your thoughts at any point? No, no, Allah, we don't say Allah enters our thoughts. Like we say Allah, can, Allah gives you messages. Through your that's thoughts. right. Allah inspires you sometimes. Inspire you meaning that Allah will guide you to do something which is, uh, uh, we don't say revelation because revelation, we say Allah inspires you to do something which yeah. is, yeah. How do, you know, like, how do you know if that thought is coming from Allah or if it's coming from Shaitan? That's a good point. My, my, that's a, spot on it is good. That, in this point, I said, then, because we have a criteria. What is the criteria? is the revelation from Allah which we can establish with certainty and knowledge and clear proofs is from Allah and our thoughts. That's why the scholars mention our thoughts and our dreams cannot change Allah's legislation because our Allah's legislation is the criteria. That's why side points, that's why when we speak to Christians they say about the, the Holy Spirit but we're going to tell them, listen, we cannot even verify the Holy Spirit. You claim to have a Holy Spirit, he claims to have a Holy Spirit and you are saying the completely different thing. So how can we judge? But we as the Muslims, we have the Quran and the Sunnah and tell you, hey sister, read. Hey brother, read. And you can see, it's something tangible. So if your thoughts tell you to do something evil, okay, then you go back to Quran and Sunnah. For example, imagine Satan says, I'm a prophet. He tells me I'm a prophet of God. I say, no, 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 wait, wait. Allah in the Quran clearly said, Muhammad is the last prophet. So I know that's from Satan. If, someone, if Satan tell me, come, Listen to music by, 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 by way of listening to music, you get close to Allah. I said, no, no, no. The Quranic verses, the hadith clearly say music is haram. Someone tells me about smoking drugs. You know, I met a guy. Literally, that's what he said to me. He said, do you know how I mediate? You know how I worship God? He said, how? He said, by smoking spliff. I said, look, doesn't mean because you feel good at that time, he makes it right. You understand? That's why, you know, us feeling good about something, doesn't make it right because we know we need to take ecstasy or cocaine or you start feeling good at that moment, but doesn't make it right. You understand, my sister? So, yeah, so the Quran, the Sunnah is the criteria to determine if our thought is a right thought or a wrong thought. Or our the dreams that we have, Prophet Muhammad wasalam, told us that this type of dreams that we have is from Allah. But how do you know? Go back to Quran and Sunnah. If I see a dream that I'm, uh, what they call it, uh, again, or uh, I'm. Uh, my father told, if I see a dream that Allah told me, uh, quote unquote, uh, Allah told me, do not pray anymore. I said, no, that's a lie. That's not from Allah because Allah said to his prophet, who Allah has forgiven all his shortcomings. He said, Worship your Lord until you die. There's no taking break. You understand? Is that clear? Yeah. Is, uh, will Shaitan be judged on judgment day? Be? Will Shaitan be judged, judged on Judgment Day? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Shaitan on the Day of Judgment, he will give a ceremony, he will give a talk to mankind. And he will say to mankind, that's what Ibra, Ibrahim, he will say to them, I just called you and you answered my call. I never forced you. It was before mine. And Allah told you it was the truth. Truth. I'm not going to save you, and you're not going to save me. And Allah even mentioned, Inna shaytana, another verse, yeah? Inna shaytana kana insani khadula. That verily the Satan, he will betray the son of Adam or the daughter of Adam. So the Satan will be punished with the fire, no doubt. He will receive. Because remember, why Satan hates us? Because Satan was an arrogant person. But the angels, before that, he was a righteous person from the apparent. If we were an angel, no, person. He was not an angel, no. He was a jinn. He was a jinn. That's right. We don't believe he was an angel. That's a Christian, Christian, uh, Christian teaching. But Islamically, we believe he was a, a jinn, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly uh, uh, states in the Quran. So that's why, you know, test, what Allah tests us. And in Arabic, we call it test as the fitna. What does it mean? It's like when you put a gold into the fire, taftinhu, you know, put in the gold into the fire to see if it's a real gold or fake. So Allah puts people into the test in order to see if they are true believers or not. Because I can claim to you a believer of God, I love God, but as soon as Allah put me in a test, I turn away from it. As Allah said in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ 
Some people worship Allah on the edge, literally on the edge. If something good happened to him, we say, Islam is good, Allah is Muslims. If something bad happened to him, he turns away from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned another verse, khasira dunya wal akhira. This person will lose this life and the year after. So shaitan will be punished, pun no doubt about that. That's why, sister, it's now for you to take that decision. Say, you know what, I don't want to follow shaitan. I want to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know. I mean, like I said, no one knows we are going to die. There's nothing guaranteeing this life except death. How many people left their houses and never come back? How many people won't sleep, they never wake up? That's what Allah said in the Quran, all mankind, everyone, prepare yourself for the day of resurrection. Allah said, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ On the day of resurrection, when the man will run away from his son, the mother will run away from her daughter, on that day, everyone will say, myself, myself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقَّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدًا وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدًا وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدًا لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدًا وَقَالَ قَارِينُهُ And the verse, but the shahid here, the intoxication of death come with the truth. When you're about to die, I'm not sure if you had a panic attack before. When you get confused, you don't know what's happening to you. When a death comes to one of us, the veil will be removed. You see the angels in front of you. What is going to benefit you? Nothing except your Lord. Believe in your Creator. And believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This life, all these amusements, all of these temptations in this life is nothing in comparison to the hereafter. I was watching Dubai. You know, Dubai, mashallah, is so beautiful. Dubai is like a different world, man. Dubai is so beautiful, mashallah. I said to my wife, we're watching together. I said to her, you know this, what we see in comparison to paradise is like a bin. When you be in Jannah, when you compare paradise to Dubai now, you look as it's a rubbish place. What are we doing here? Jannah, paradise. That's why, you know, even our time, the atheist scientists, they want to look for eternity. But look, Allah is the most wise. Eternity in this life is not befitting. It's a punishment. Why? Oh, you get sick, earthquake. You don't want to live for long like this. You have children, children have children, you suffer in stress, you have too many things. So look how Allah is wise. Eternity is good for paradise. As for the evil ones, eternity in Jahannam. Because the greatest sin against Allah will turn away from Him. You understand? That's why you have the choice now to accept Islam, to reject it, to worship your God. And I always mention this example, sister. Imagine you are in a house, may Allah forbid, you wake up and there's a fire everywhere. All right? You try your best to save yourself. You try and you couldn't, you gave up. If we know it's over, I'm dying. I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? If I saved your life, what would you say to me? You. Would you remember me all the time? Yeah. I saved your life. No doubt you're going to remember that brother Shamsi who saved my life. So why would, not, why would I not remember and be grateful to the one who gave us a life for free? You know? That's why, you know, remember earlier, oh no, I mentioned about the gift. Uh, likewise, if you want to worship your creator, be grateful to him, worship him the way he wants. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ They have not commanded except to worship Allah sincerely. What is sincerely? For his sake. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ O Muhammad, be upon righteousness the way you have been commanded, not the way we feel. You understand? 